I'm Kelly. I'm Rich. And we are One of Us Adventures. In the last couple of weeks, we've made our kitchen cabinets. And last week, we made a pull-out kitchen ladder. Today, we are pushing on with our kitchen. This week, we are fitting an LPG outside access point. Finishing up the water inside. Installing a snazzy new worktop oven and sink. And a few more bits. We hope you enjoy and please leave us a comment and a like. The kitchen install continued with a few little jobs. First of all, fitting these neat 50mm vents to the kick plates. What are you doing, Cal? We are Osmo oiling the drawers. Kelly did a stellar job on this, applying the first coat with a brush and then ragging off the rest. And it took absolutely hours, but looks great. Whilst Kelly was making excellent progress with that oiling, I installed the pipes for under the sink. I insulated around the wheel arch and I installed a dropout vent for our gas cooker before turning my attention to other things. When we're on sites and stuff like that, we're thinking that we'll probably want to be cooking outside as much as possible. Because we're carrying LPG, we thought we'd put in an external gas point on the side of the van. We've got a gas pipe in the van here that's going to run up to the triplet. So what I'm going to do is take a feed off of that, which is isolated, down and out through the skirt of this. To do that, we're going to use this ball finch kit. First thing I'm going to do is drill the hole out through the floor for where this is going to come and then drill the hole in the side of the vehicle. Now, Wonderbus is special because they, when the coach company owned this, they paid to have aluminium flares put on the side of it and they're bonded over the old stuff. I've had to drill through both skins here and then I've made sure I've filled up in between with hammerite, push this in through and, and screw it into place. And this is how it works. So this will be on a flexible hose and it'll go to your barbecue, which we won't have for a while, but we're future-proofed. Uh, you pop it in here, it's closed at the moment. It's hard to do with your left hand. Up you go. Now the gas is open, ready to use. And when you're not using it, pull it out, seal it up, pop it in your little storage thingy. Ready to go. Quite a long time today spent on this, um, but it's secured in now. The water pipes are done, the gas pipes are in for the inside and outside. This is secure and in and solid. This space here, we are going to put some more storage but I'm slightly changing what I was gonna do. We were just gonna have some open fronted shelves to store like loads of food and snacks and this, that and the other. But this is 94 centimeters wide. And even though I am massive, not even I need that many stacks. So what we're actually gonna do is modify the cabinet and build something that's gonna also house our bin, our cleaning equipment and our dirty clothes and things like that. First thing I had to do was cut a notch out for the cables that will run behind our unit. So you can see I've got a gap, I don't want a gap here. So what I have, and I've used on previous videos, is I've got a scrap of wood. With pencil holes drilled at one centimetre intervals for scribing. So then we can cut that off with a jigsaw. So in order to get the other end piece in the correct position, what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to attach the front and back kit plates and the bottom shelf and then that way I'll know exactly where the end piece needs to come and describe that on. And to affix these, I'm going to use pocket holes. This is fast becoming one of my favourite ways of securing. They are absolutely rock solid once they go in with a bit of glue, bomb proof, I hope. The next thing I did was pop it in the van and then started scribing before finding a slight issue with this end. I've come across a problem actually. This pillar is way further back than that pillar. The wall actually <clears throat> goes like that. So the scribe that I've taken here has gone too far in. I'm going to assemble the cupboard and then once it's assembled, I know the front's all flat and straight. I'm going to scribe that bit into the wall. I'm going to try to channel my inner sort of Greg Virgo and think, what would Greg do? And all I can hear him saying is van conversion, which isn't all that helpful, but I'm not Greg. Anyhow, 
less of the impressions, more of the woodworking. The frame's assembled, the shelf's in here. I'm just gonna screw it in from the bottom with those pocket holes. This has been more of a pain in the backside than those cabinets to build because the door frame here is so much further back than the rest of the van, almost like it dog legs in. Which meant a lot of scribing on all edges really. Um, little bits of cutting and sanding to get it to sit nicely against the wall, a uniform depth. And then I added some shelves and divided part at the top. I'm just gonna scribe that little divider bit. Kelly's gonna help me. This meant the top and bottom dividers sat nicely against the wall. I'm gonna have a door on the front to cover the bin and the storage underneath, which is for the stuff you kind of want to hide away, whether it's necessary. I'm gonna cut it now and then with the end piece, hopefully make use of that for the upright. Okay, so this is the door. I bought this concealed hinge jig to use, which says makes hanging doors with hinges very easy. The reason why I got this is not just for this, because for our overhead cabinets, I've got five doors going on there. Um, and I wanted to get it right. My hinges required a 17 millimeter reveal, which meant setting them at three millimeters on the jig. So I'm gonna set the jig so it's 15 centimeters to the center at the top and at the bottom. Now I've clamped this up, some face clamps, it's in its guide. The jig comes with an inbuilt stopper so you don't drill through the board itself. And it also comes with a little guide for drilling out the hinge screws. You can see here. And then it's simply a case of aligning it on the door and screwing it into place. And then the hinges that I've gone for both soft close and have lots of adjustment in them. A bit of adjustment required. It's not bad. Right, okay, we've got a strip to go in here and here. To secure this, I've just drilled some more holes. I've drilled out these two holes here for our CBE socket. So on the end here, we're gonna have a 230 volt socket. And we're gonna have a light switch, which controls the indoor lights and some lights on the steps in the bus. I'm going to veneer the front of these, which is very straightforward, albeit laborious. So you can get this iron on edge and tape you cut it a little bit longer than what you need you iron it on and you can either get a cutter which we didn't have much luck with if you watched last week's video or use a knife cut down the edge sand the edge with some fine sandpaper and then this because it is basically birch well it is birch just very thin veneer of it you can oil it the same way as we will be doing the rest of the wood. We noticed on the time lapse there was a little bit of blood. So this this stuff's quite sharp actually, and I've just cut my finger on it. My first concern though was, will it come off the wood? Um, I think I re need to re reassess my priorities. Let me put a plaster on so uh, I don't get any dust in this or get it on the wood. In the week, this whopper of a worktop arrived. It's four meters long, twenty-two mil thick. We're going to fit it later. First of all, we wanted to see if the triplex oven would fit in its place. And it largely did, although it did sit a little bit proud of the front. We have found that this cabinet in the middle is like four millimeters deeper than this side, because I I don't know why really, probably when I've scribed it, something's gone amiss. This is a straight edge though, so I'm a little bit perturbed. What I'm gonna try and do to remedy it is route out a small groove from here to here for the lip of the triplex to sit in. So if I get it right, it will all sit flush and you'll never notice um, this lip has been here or it will be minimal, you know? Uh, if I get it wrong, then it was gonna look horrific. So yeah, today's not been a good day so far, but this hopefully is gonna allow us to press on with it. We wanted to check that the triplex fitted in here, fitted in flush, so we can calculate how far back the worktop will need to be cut. Um, so kind of glad that I found this now and not after I've decided to cut the worktop, thinking it will fit this space because it is ever so slightly out, like I say, and it's enough for it not to fit flush back on the other side. So I need to fix that. 
Thankfully that largely worked and this is what we ended up with, a nice flush front. Trial fitted the triplex in, I've trial fitted the gas pipe, I've still got a little bit of a bend to do on there. I've recut this piece at the back so it's deeper and sits under the lip here. And the thinking being, hopefully, when I've cut the worktop, I can then route in here and use that as the back edge. It's been a long day this just to get to this stage, but like I said, I'm glad I found this out before I cut the worktop. That would have been disastrous. After all those fun and games, I decided to cut the worktop. First of all, experimented with a laminate bit in my jigsaw. However, that did leave a little bit of a rough finish with a few chips on it. So I decided to use my plunge saw. So I scored it first with a few millimeter cut and then went through with about three or four deeper cuts until the edge had been cut off. And that did leave me with a really nice sharp edge um, that I was pleased with. So I made the decision to cut the rest of the worktop, the edges at least, using the plunge saw. So I cut it to length and then it was ready to pop in the bus. Now, what I've been tempted to do is scribe this in along the wall. However, it says leave a four millimeter gap and that largely is what there is there. So I'm gonna leave it well alone. Up this end here where dog legs in, we're gonna have to make a clever windowsill and we might, we might, but we don't have it yet, put a upstand all the way along and then we've kind of got an inset shelf there too, um, but we haven't decided yet. The next thing I'm gonna do though, because if you look here where we enter the bus, We've got the full width of the work um, top here. We don't want that. I'm going to cut it down to 33 centimetres. We've stepped it in and we've got access to the bus like we like. The next job is we're going to measure out where the sink's going to go and also where we're going to cut the edge of the work top off. So I'm just going to go and grab the sink that we've chosen. It might split opinion, but we like it. <laughs> here it is. We've gone for black sink, which people have warned us against because they get stained. We've got black stuff in the house um, that we've managed to keep clean. So we thought, why not just go for it? One thing to point out with this though is it is quite heavy. It's not as heavy as a Belfast sink that some people fit, but it's heavier than a stainless sink. Um, so we've made a compromise really with going for a thinner worktop, which we like the look of anyway, which ironically, I think will weigh about the same as the sink. Uh, but if you add it up to like an oak worktop or even a 40 mil worktop, I think it there or thereabouts works out as the same in combination if you think of it like that. The first job I need to, I you know I've got it upside down. So I'm going to place it where I want it to go and draw around it. So what I've gone for, I've gone for two inches on the front, five centimetres on the front, a smaller gap on the back of like an inch and a half. And what you're supposed to do is mark a centimetre in all the way around and then that's where you cut your hole. You can see here then, so we've got the outside that drew on the sink, inside line centimetre in. I'm going to radius it out here ever so slightly because the sink allows for it. And they recommend that for strength, so I'll do that so it's not just a cornery corner. I'm going to cut this out with my plunge saw along the straight lines and then the corner bits will just eke out with the jigsaw. I'm just going to come off camera, double check all my measurements um, because I don't want to cut this out and for it to be wrong. And I'll see you outside. Plunge saw made really nice accurate straight cuts. And finish off the corner with the jigsaw. Wow, I had it all clamped down and everything. When I cut this out, the way they were moved, it almost like catapulted me into the moon. So just bear that in mind. Um, thankfully, no harm done. I'm gonna move it all along now and cut this end piece out again with my track saw. I'm gonna try and try and uh, put a wedge in here. And the reason being is this bit's gonna be cut out in a minute too. So I want a good chunk here to give this a little bit of rigidity. Basically, we're cutting the whole front of it out. Um, we're gonna have to be careful when we do that to not stamp the board. So 
certainly looks a bit different now. I'm gonna go and pop it in the bus, see how accurate I've been. Should be a lot lighter now too. The sink obviously has fixings to pull it down into the, the cabinet. And because the, the worktop's 22 millimeters, we would have had to add packing, but we don't because of the supports we've got here. Unfortunately, these do foul where the fittings come through though. So I'm just gonna notch out where they need to come through. Um, and the happy coincidence is that extra 15 millimeters will make the work top, top up to be 37 millimeters. So the brackets will work fine with it. So Brucey bonus really. I'm just gonna seal the inside edge with some varnish. I'm just gonna use some floor varnish that I've got knocking about. And whilst I've still got the masking tape on, just to put a couple of coats on. I had to drill out a rather large hole. This was nerve wracking and I almost changed my mind. I used my Dremel jig to cut out the circle and this was working really well until, of course, it didn't. The Dremel has just overheated and killed itself. So letting it cool down a minute. Once we do that, we're gonna try and fit the hole for the tap. So in the instructions, it says to bang it out. It just sounds a bit brutal to me. I'm worried about smashing the sink. So I'm gonna carefully try and drill it out with a 35 mil drill bit. Spoilers, I did smash it out with a hammer and this is what you get. Because it was marked on the back with 35 mil, I then drilled it out with a hole saw. And then we're ready to install the tap. All right, Dave's gone to get another Dremel from his house, bless him. So let me show you what our tap looks like. So it comes with everything you need. These are not the tails that come through it. These are John Guest tails, which I'll show you in a minute. First thing you need to do is pop this on the bottom of the collar, and then that goes through the hole from the top, tighten it up, and then we'll worry about fitting this little weight thing, which helps pull the shower head back down when you let go of it, and the tails for the water. And this goes in this guy. Just gonna get some PTFT tape, pop that on there, and it goes in there. The 10mm John Guest flexible bits were added and so were the brackets that will hold the sink down onto the worktop. These are the ones that came with it. Then with the arrival of the borrowed Dremel, thanks Dave, I routed out the back of the worktop all the way through to the front, leaving us with a nice neat hole. The hole in the inside cabinet I just cut out with a jigsaw, leaving me with this. Okay, it's time to get this thing secured. I'm just gonna use some good old fashioned wood screws for this, making sure they're not too long. Sunday morning, sorry to those of you who usually watch on a Sunday morning, but it's likely you're not watching this on a Sunday morning. Um, I'm just gonna fit up my waist, managed to bag this off of Amazon Warehouse. It's actually from B&Q via Amazon Warehouse for four quid. So I'm gonna pop this in. And here we are, and then I've got a compact waist to fit on the bottom. This guy's got like a little bladder in it. Basically, it'll allow water through, but it won't allow it back the other way. So thanks to Dave at Project Big Red Bus. Follow them on Instagram. Great people. Thanks for the recommendation. I'm going to install mine horizontally, bringing it um, back towards the back of my cabinet, and then I'm hoping to run the pipe down. We used a 40 mil pipe snug, which used a 51 mil hole saw. Dave's with me today, so we're gonna cut up the pipe and dry fit it all in. And then at this end, I'm gonna leave it for now until I connect the tank connector up. I'm just gonna have it drop out the floor. Obviously it will be in the tank in the next week or two, but not for now, just so we can test it. Dave was a tremendous help and just cracked on with measuring up and cutting that pipe. Whilst I re-popped in the electrics for the end, where we're having our socket, and our two light switches for our 12 volts. What we got to do? Weld that, weld that, and weld that. Yeah, and then weasel. A weasel. Weld, weld, and weasel. We have bought this filter to go on our cold water in, um, mainly just to take the taste and stuff out of it, although we think we're probably going to use bottled water. This lasts six months, um, filters down to one micron. So we're going to pop this in underneath the sink. Finally, it was time to silicone in the sink. I'm just going to put a smear all the way around here as well. I'm going to smear it in with by hand. Just to 
seal it. We have varnished it as well, but it's just a bit added protection, isn't it? Ow! My dad had put me in the rib, sorry everyone. And the, the sort of action. Because you, you can, uh, you know, I mean, the tube's got a finite shelf life anyway, so I thought. Might as well. Might as well. Here's my dad. We actually use Sika Flex EBT for this because it's flexible. You pop the sink in and then use the clips to pull it down so it was all in there nice and tight. Okay, so the waste is in. Look at it, so work it up. It's down here, along. Put some clips in here and it goes out the floor here. And at the moment, we've just got it going into a bucket that's going to go into our waste tank, which is underneath the van. The next thing I need to do is hook up the water. And um, you can see in here, we've got the cold water feed going through the filter. That's going to go into this tail and then the hot water going into here. So I'm just going to hook those up and put a couple of P clips on there. Obviously, we don't have any hot water at the moment because the gas is yet to be commissioned. But once it is, we, sh we should very quickly have hot water. After a day's hard labour, we're about to test the water. No, we're not. We are. We've test it all. So we've just tested all the joints are pushed up tight. I'm going to switch the pump on in the back. And Kelly and Dave are going to be in here checking for leaks. Just bringing out some towels. You got swimming. Not swimming in the bus. You ready? So if you see a leak, tell me and I'll, I'll turn it off. Ready, Dad? Get under your sink. <laughs> right, I'm pressured up to the pump. Just checking for pumps here and I'll open the cock. I'm opening the cock. Okay, I've got a leak. What? I've got a little leak. What? A leak? It's out of this bit. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, I can fit, fix that just with a fit in like this, an elbow, and push it into there. So it's not the end of the world. Um, and that's what I'll do. So yeah, not bad, not bad, not bad leakage. I'm pretty pleased. The other thing that's amazing is we've got really far this week with the kitchen. Welcome to my kitchen. Sink is in. I love it. I love how it looks. Um, shower, this pours out. Tap as normal stream or shower. Again in stream, shower. Chopping board, colanders under here. This will all move out. This is a plate rack and this is for like, your cutlery. This can also go off as well and there's another little drain in there. And this can also all store inside here for when you're on the road. Okay, let's test to see if the waste works. <gasps> oh boy. It works all right. It works a treat. Yeah. Worktop, oven is in, but gas is not connected yet. Yeah, we still need to do that. Yeah. The rest of our workstation and our bin. And then if you open the cupboard, you can see it's in there. We've got a nice bit of storage. So there's still a little bit to do. We've got the fridge to go in, gas to connect, the front bits and bobs to go on there. Thank you as always for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe and leave us a comment. We'll see you soon. One, two, three. Bye. Bye.